So now we're on to low temperature evaporators and how those are defrosted. Um, we're going to take the next several videos in uh, small bite sized chunks so they'll be shorter and a little bit less information per video because each one is important for you to understand and when you plug them all together it goes through the whole um, freezer defrost cycle. So when you're talking about low temperature evaporators you know we're at zero to minus 10 degrees uh, you need a heater to help defrost the evaporator. In the coolers we had 40 degree air that off cycle defrost uh, time would uh, allow that 40 degree air to defrost the coils but the box temperature is well below freezing so you need it needs some help. So because of that you also need some controls to terminate the defrost so you're not heating up the um, freezer box and then a fan delay so you're not blowing hot air through the freezer box as well. We'll talk about those controls here uh, in a little bit. And then there's also a uh, limit on the heaters, the heater safety, and that prevents the, if something gets stuck, it prevents the heaters from uh, heating up the box. And then we do need a clock like we talked about to control defrost and freeze cycles and it's a little bit more complicated clock than we just looked at timer clock. Let's back up here. Okay so here is a view of the end of a uh, freezer coil and here are the defrost heater elements. Most of the time these are on the bottom. I'm not certain if this picture from our textbook is sideways or not. It looks like this is the back of the evaporator coil. Many times it's on the bottom of the coil. These defrost heaters are similar elements to what you would see in your oven and they just uh, go back and forth across the coil. Here's the heater safety that we talked about with the um, that will shut the heaters off if they get stuck on. This is the defrost termination and fan delay which uh, terminates defrost and, and delays the fans from coming on and then the wiring terminal board for everything else and of course the fuses are right there. Here's another picture of, of one, the uh, terminal board, defrost termination clipped to uh, a little end piece on the U-bend here. Here's the heater safety. This will also, um, if, the, if these, the evaporator coil tubing gets too warm, it will shut that, uh, the electric heaters off. And then here are the wires that go to the heaters right here. And those heaters go back into the coil. All right, so the defrost clock, just a quick view of what we have. This is the front view here, similar to the clock we talked about earlier. It's got um, your trippers here that trip it into defrost and some settings over here that we will talk about here in, in a little bit in another video. On the back side of the unit, there's a slide that opens and closes these contacts and the solenoid that term when we terminate defrost that operates that slide as well. Okay, so that is it for um, the basic basics of low temperature evaporator coil defrost. So in our next sets of videos, we'll go through everything step by step.